Warning, the following episode contains adult language. Viewer discretion is advised. Alright guys, hello, 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 welcome back, welcome back. If you guys haven't figured it out by now, you are listening to the CMP podcast. My name is Christina Plord, your host as always, and today is another paranormal episode. For those of you who may be new here, the paranormal episodes that we do is I go on Reddit and I find between seven and eight stories on the paranormal pages or any sort of pages like that and read them to you guys. I never read them before. Uh, The only thing I click is just the title if the title sounds cool but that is it. So whatever you guys are hearing, my genuine reaction. Um, I love reading about this stuff so that's why I figured I've never heard of a podcast where they read stuff like this off like reddit or like forums like this. Um, So yeah, so I was like, you know what, let's do it because this is the stuff, the kind of stories, I want to hear like personal stories, you know, I don't want to just see like a documentary. I feel like when someone's like typing it out or like emailing you or calling you, like it's different. There's a little bit more deeper connection, you know, and you can kind of really like think of, oh my God, like this person is experiencing this. What the fuck, you know? So anyways just like that let's get right to it so the first one is um r slash paranormal posted by you slash puzzle headed ad 4701 and the title is i heard a laugh from inside my closet so this happened yesterday i was sitting in my room and kept seeing shadows out of the corner of my eye me and my sister were watching some type of show and then i hear it a laugh but it came from the closet. It was faint, but sounded like a wicked old woman type of laugh. So when they say that, I'm like imagining like Hansel and Gretel, Gretel woman, like, (laughs) (laughs) um, I told my sister I was going to the bathroom and ran out of the room. I felt pretty guilty leaving my sister in there. So I went back to get her. When I got in the room, she wasn't there. I called her name and she came out of the bathroom. I asked why she looked so pale and she said she heard laughing and thought it was me, but she realized I wasn't even in the room. She ran out of the room as well. The craziest thing is I never even told her I heard laughing, so now I'm scared to even look at my closet. I would just set my closet on fire at that point, you know? Like, I would just be like, well, it's gone. It's a lost cause. And But I do find that so funny, the fact that she just kind of left her sister there. And she was just like, yeah, peace, I'm out. <laughs> every man for himself, right? You know? I I wish I, part of me wishes I had a sister. I mean, me and my brother are super close, but I mean, growing up, like, we weren't close growing up because he was my younger brother. Like, he wasn't, like, my younger sister, and so he was always playing with, like, his toys and stuff, and then I was playing with mine, and then we would argue, and then, you know, it would be the WWE Smackdown in the, like, downstairs basement, you know? I'm sure everyone has had experiences like that with their siblings, but I adore my brother. I love him to death. (laughs) Um, All right. So next is r slash paranormal posted by you slash social social vegan avoid meat. The title is haunted abandoned church. This happened to me back in 2008 when I was 14. So my memory is a little fuzzy. My mom, brother, and I drove to deep in the sticks of Tennessee from Texas to visit. We were only staying for the weekend. My mom, aunt, and grandmother were talking, and I don't know how we got to this conversation, but my aunt was telling me how she heard about this abandoned church that was haunted. If you went to the church and took this stick that kept the door closed and put it somewhere else, when you came back, it would be in its ori- in its original place. There was a statue of an angel, and if you shined a light in its eyes at night, they would bleed what the fuck she was spending the night at a friend's house and her friend also had another friend over that she wasn't familiar with her two friends decided to go out to this church at night early morning at night early morning oh so probably like like 3 4 a.m it's pitch black because it's out in the country they lay a ouija board on the truck that's all i need like nope nope we know this is gonna go bad i don't i personally don't think i mean 
please let me know your opinion. But I personally don't think you should be messing around with Ouija boards. I've heard too many stories of it opening up portals or it opening up something and something not so nice comes through. So no thank you. I'm okay. Um, a Ouija board on the truck and start asking questions. Basically, some spirit names John said... He was murdered by a gunshot in some year in the early 1800s. I swear in this town there are more dead people than there are alive people. <laughs> I actually don't actually know that, but it seems like it. The last question that they asked was, where are you? And the thing flew off the board. They decided they didn't want to look for it. Part of me wonders if it's still at the church and where it would be. So they checked the stones and found John. Then they thought that they heard a gunshot and ran back to the truck and went home. I said I wanted to go to the church. She took me, my brother, and my cousin, who were the same age. It took us 45 minutes to drive out there, and the road that it was empty, nothing but grass. There was no way you could walk there. Across the street was a field that went on for miles, and on either side of the church was just grass and trees, no street lights. This is like setting up for like a perfect like horror movie scene, you know? Like, cuts, scene opens up, and it's just the church with nothing next to it. You know, some movie company called me. I got some ideas. Maybe that's what I'll do next with my life. <laughs> so we get there and it's a one room white little church. It's surrounded by some trees towards the outside of the fence. The fence was black iron and the opening was big enough for the trucks to come through. We saw that creepy angel statue looked like the Reaper and we pull up the gate is already open and it's only open for one person to go through the gate. Immediately, my brother and my cousin who were in the back seat were like, oh no, we're not going in there. And my aunt was like, why is the gate open? I just don't understand why the gate is open. And I had my hand on the handle and I looked at the gate and I knew something was waiting for me on the other side of that gate. I could see, maybe my mind made it up, but I didn't see it with my physical eyes. A ghostly white dude with yellow crooked teeth maliciously smiling at me waiting for me to come in. Oh, hell no. So I take my hand off the handle and said, okay, I'm ready to go home. Yep. See, smart fucking cookie. Because if this was a horror movie, she'd be like, eh, whatever. Let's keep going. And the next thing you know, she just got murked by a ghost. You know, like, come on, come on, do better. <laughs> I mean, I feel like every horror movie, you can like tell that that's about to happen. Like they put the creepy music on and then something turns on and it's like, Oh, well, there you go. Like, you knew that was going to happen. Like, why would you go to the noise, you know? Like, even in, like, not even the ghost movies, but even if it's, like, just a scary movie with an intruder, you hear a noise and they're like, hello? Like, yep, the murder's just going to be like, oh, you caught me. Sorry, whatever. No, that's not how that works. Um. Oh, my God, I lost my... Okay, there we go. So she backed out and went down the road a little bit further, and the closest thing next to us to turn around at, because there were little ditches on the side of the road in case it rains, was another graveyard. Not surprising. I'm telling y'all there are more dead people in this town than alive people. We passed by the church, and I wasn't expecting her to stop, but she stopped to take a photo with the digital camera, and the door was open to the church. Oh, there's some shit. We all freaked out, and I swear I had this feeling like we need to leave because I felt like something was going to chase after us. When we got home, the three of us couldn't stop looking at the camera of the church. The thing I remember the most was that the treetops grew into a face. It looked like a bald man with a big crooked nose and a long, narrow chin. When my aunt got the picture developed, there were four orbs, one by the gate, one by the door, and two by the window. My brother and cousin swore they saw green eyes looking out the window. I didn't sleep that night. I felt like something was hovering over me, waiting for me to fall asleep. I kept praying that nothing would happen. I tried watching George Lopez shake it off. Does everyone remember when that would come on at, like, 1 a.m.? I loved that show. <laughs> I thought it was super funny. But damn, there was no shaking it. I didn't sleep until I got back to Texas. That was my last night in Tennessee, and when I went back home, I slept with my light on every night for a while. And while we were there, I could just... I could feel just this unbelievable amount of hate from the demons that were there. They were so aggressive and ready to attack. It just pierced through you, and I walked away knowing that there is a God and he is good. I don't know how I knew, but you know it when you come across something so evil. No human can conjure that kind of hate that crushes your soul. That's my only experience. I will never doubt that there is a spirit world after that. My aunt sent me the picture, but I tore it up back in 2012 because I was afraid that I would bring something bad into the house. I mean, I truly believe that you know when something, like, just not normal is around you know like there's just some shit there you don't know what it is 
but you know it doesn't have good intentions and I always go with your fucking gut whatever you're in anything in life whether you're at a party whether you're in a creepy building whether you're in a parking lot like always go with your gut I've heard way too many stories of people they go with their gut and they're thankful of it otherwise and people who didn't go with their gut and it didn't turn out so well no matter what it was in life so always go with your gut your gut will always tell you I definitely think that humans have like a sense you know like they're they know we know we know when something's around we can just feel it just like how the body like reacts to a goat like you get goosebumps like our bodies know even if our brains aren't like registering it right away I really think that they know Okay, so the next story is from r slash paranormal posted by you slash outdoorsman 2573. The title is Ghosts in My House. The last few weeks, very strange things have been happening to myself and my mother. It all started about three weeks ago when the smoke blew in super thick. I'm sure you've seen pictures. I was outside working on my truck when I noticed it was completely silent. When I say quiet, I mean not a bird chirping, no wind, nothing. I've never gotten such a strange vibe before, but it wasn't an uncomfortable or threatening feeling. The next morning, my mom told me she saw shadows in her room. Once again, I didn't think much of it because she never stops going and was probably just tired. Three days ago, something let our dog in. Nobody was home, and we left the dog outside since we just went to the neighbor's house. Last night, I accidentally dropped a sock, and it found its way into the laundry basket. I was home alone and planned on picking it up later. My mom wakes me up again this morning and says the bathtub is full of water. Neither of us filled it up, but nothing else has changed in the bathroom. Like I said before, I don't get a bad feeling or threatening feeling at all, but it's a rather warm feeling. Does anyone have any ideas of what it could be? Um, I don't know. I think based off the feeling that he's got, because I think I talked about this last paranormal episode, I'm a very big believer in, like, going with your gut. And a a lot of the time it's been shown that if you go with your gut, you're usually right nine times out of ten. So maybe it's, like, someone that passed that is, like, talking to him. Like, maybe, like, a joker. Like, they think it's funny. Um... I mean, if they're not uncomfortable or threatening, I don't know. I mean, I would, I don't know. I think if it was, like, if I had an uncomfortable, I didn't have an uncomfortable or threatening feeling, I would just kind of, like, make it, you know how they say, like, make it known that you know that they're there. Like, hey, I know you're here. I'd really appreciate it if you stopped filling my bathtub or doing creepy shit like that. But, yeah, I don't know. There might be ghosts. Or maybe you're, or maybe someone's sleepwalking. Set up like hidden cameras because I used to sleepwalk when I was little. And I mean, I grew out of that, but some people don't grow out of it. Some people actually like sleepwalk their entire lives, which is crazy to me because I probably would have fallen down the stairs. I've literally fallen down the stairs and broke my collarbone before awake. Imagine what I could do when I was sleeping. Who knows? Anyways, moving on. <laughs> All right. So the next one is called, I was given, pl- oh. I was given plums. It's from r slash paranormal encounters posted by you slash XP Corin. Corin? Corin. Um, the title, like I said, was called I was given plums. Paranormal encounters are a bit normal for me, but this one was just weird. I was hanging out on the floor with my bunny in the living room one night. It was around 3 a.m. and the lights were off when I heard something plop near me. I turned around and I saw two old plums right beside each other a few inches behind me. What the fuck? There's a fruit basket in the kitchen, but that's pretty far from the living room, and I know the plums were at the bottom of the fruit basket because they were a bit older, so they were soft, and you could still see the indentation marks from the basket. I'm just trying to figure out why I was given fruit, specifically plums. I mean, once again, going back to the last story we just read, it might be someone who, like, knows you. Like, I feel like a lot of the time, maybe, like, something happened with someone who passed, and maybe they think that you'd remember it if you saw that. But you're, like, looking at it like, what the fuck? Like, maybe someone who passes, she knows their favorite ve- fruit. I almost said vegetable. I almost said your favorite vegetable was a plum. That makes no sense. <laughs> I swear I know what fruits are. Anyways, um, that their favorite fruit was a plum. So they're like, oh, if I put these near her, maybe she'll know. Or someone, like, the ghost is just trying to mess with you and they find it funny. Who knows? You never know. I'm not a ghost. I can't speak on that you know? All right. So the next one 
is r slash paranormal posted by you slash xvx hutton xvx it says families terrified should i move oh this is a long one good I recently moved into my first home with my wife and son. We have lived here since August of last year. Unexplainable things started happening about a month after moving in, such as waking up to lights being on that we turned off before going to bed and doors being open that were closed. I thought maybe my son was getting up at night. This continued to be the only things happening until about three months ago when my son had a friend over to stay the night. At about 5 a.m., I heard the two of them screaming. The way I heard my son scream dad was the most gut-wrenching, horrific thing I've ever heard. As I'm going to my son's room, I noticed that the front door was wide open and my shuffle became a sprint. Holy, I literally just got goosebumps because I can only imagine, like, the fear. Because, I mean, you see the front door open, you automatically think someone broke in. Like, you don't think, like, oh my god, it's a ghost. You know? Um, I enter my son's room and nothing was there but the two of them crying. They told me there was a man standing in the door watching them. I called the police. They said there were no signs of a break-in and my son and his friend couldn't give a description except that the man was tall. So he just filed a report. After that night, I had brought my squirrel dog from his pen to be a inside dog. I had to fight with him for 30 minutes before he finally let me bring him inside. He went to the corner of the living room and just whimpered. Fast forward a week, we're having family movie night in the living room. All three of us are on the couch and my dog was in the recliner. My dog started to growl, then we heard a click. My dog jumped up and started howling at the front door. He's a hound dog, so he howls instead of barks. Nothing strange there. I noticed that that door had been unlocked. I know for a fact I locked it before we all sat down. I peek out the window and see nothing, then lock the door. I get my dog to calm down and we start watching the movie again. Click. The front door unlocked. I repeat what I did the first time. When I sit down again, I just stare at the doorknob. Click. I instantly jump up and run to the front door and swing it open. I mean, I was at the door before the lock finished turning. No one was there. It was a 70 degree night and my front porch felt like a winter day. Me, my wife, son, and dog all sleep in our room that night. I told the pastor at our church and he came out and blessed the house and nothing has happened at all until four days ago. Me and my wife are laying in bed. She's asleep and I'm on my phone. Our bed creaks a lot when you get on it. We are both very still and right behind me it feels and sounds like someone just sat down right beside me. I try to ignore it. Then I get goosebumps all over my body and I can hear and feel something breathing on my neck. It took everything I had to turn around just for me to see nothing. And right as I do, my bedroom door swings open and my dog started howling again. We are scared and don't know if we should move or not. But also, it's been over a year and nothing violent has happened. Is it safe to say? TLDR, nonviolent ghost experiences, have my family terrified. Should we move? All right, so my opinion of this, honestly, I read this and I immediately think of Paranormal Activity, the first one. Do you guys remember that one where it's like a slow build up and then like the last, like, what was it? The last like week or something was when like everything happened. So, I mean, if something, it's like, to me, it's like it's taunting you and like a tall man standing at your kid and the door is wide open and the dog's freaking out because the thing I also think animals they really like they can sense things they can see things like so I would honestly I would move I would move my family because I just feel like there's a lot of like signs here that are like get the fuck out of there there's something there messing with your family but then at the same time you also hear of ghosts and stuff like latching onto families and even if they move it just follows them so I don't know I would get myself blessed do something I'd get like a medium in there I don't know that's just what I would do that's terrifying that's like my biggest fear like I completely respect the paranormal but my biggest fear is like feeling like something's like breathing on your neck you know and then nothing being there like oh I get the goosebumps just thinking about it I think that's like my big 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 one (laughs) all right so the next one is r slash paranormal posted by you slash t underscore b zero n three something told me its name in a dream slash nightmare 
I had a dream last night that I was laying in my bed and I was woken up, false awakening, by the sound of my closet door sliding open. So I look at the closet and the door is open but nothing is there. So I roll over onto my side and from where I'm laying I can see my bedroom door. Underneath the door I can see a shadow standing in the hall behind the closed door. So now I'm getting nervous. I thought without speaking who's out there. Then a name came to me and it was as if I could see it in my mind. Lomi. As soon as I repeated this name, the figure quickly cracked the door open just enough to peek its head into my room, as if by saying the name was an invitation. When it popped its head through the door, I saw that this thing had deep, deep red eyes, and it seemed to have to hunch to peek its head through my door as if it were very tall. Has anyone ever experienced something like this? I honestly... Holy... Okay, so... Alright, so I just scrolled down... This is a first. So I just scrolled down and the first comment that's on this Reddit thing is I had the same dream a long time ago. I had a false awakening at night to the sound of a chainsaw. Then the door creaked open and there was a figure with a dark red mask with a chainsaw. Somehow knew that saying its name would make it go away and it did. And somehow I knew its name. It also started in an L for sure, but I don't remember what it was. Very weird. Next thing, I've dealt with a few situations like this. Like, is this something that, like, hops around people's fucking dreams and nightmares? And it's like, hey, like, I'm here. It's, like, tall and, like, dark eyes. Oh, my God. That's terrifying. This is the first one where I've read that someone's like, I've had the same one. And these people, I mean, we don't know. But these people don't know each other. Like, it's Reddit. And they had the same experience or similar experiences. See, that's what I'm telling you. I don't know how people believe in the paranormal. This shit blows my fucking mind. Like, I re I've been reading Reddit stories for years now. Like, I just go on here and read them. And some of this shit you read, it's like, it's like movie. Like, you would think it's a movie, but people swear like it's their actual experience. And I'm someone who I'm like, I give someone the benefit of the doubt unless they prove otherwise. So, I mean, I believe all these stories. You might not. You might be like, Christina, you're being fucking ridiculous. You're crazy. I don't know. But personally, I believe them. I'd be out so fast. So fast. I would freak out. Oh my god, I'm just sitting here like vibrating just thinking about it. All right. So the last one is r slash paranormal posted by you slash sassy squatch 23. Oh, I like that name. Sassy squatch. It's like sassy, um, squatch. (laughs) It's like the name for Bigfoot. There we go. I couldn't even think of what it was called. I'm getting tongue twisted today. Yeah. Like the name for big, Bigfoot, a Sasquatch. That's, there we go. That's the word. Oh, I can't sometimes, you know. All right. So the title is Paranormal or Coincidence. Hello, everyone. So my grandfather passed away August 22nd and was cremated shortly after. And my mother had pendants made for my sisters and I containing a bit of his ashes. I brought my pendant home last Sunday and I haven't been wearing it every day since except yesterday. The only reason I wasn't wearing it yesterday is because I took my daughter to the pool and was just doing chores and such beforehand and I just didn't put it on. Anyway, so before I left for the pool, I kept hearing what sounded like things falling, but I never found anything on the floor in mine and my daughter's room, and then I set something down on top of an air purifier, and it fell off about five minutes later. I guess that could be just the vibrations from the air purifier, but it was still odd as I've set things on it before and nothing has fell. The weirdest thing, though, was when I returned home from the pool. In my room, I have a bookshelf, and on it, among other things, I have a photo album with pictures of my daughter inside, and on top of that, I had two journals. When I got home, the album was on the floor in front of the bookshelf, but the journals were still on the bookshelf. I feel that if it had just been a natural occurrence or a draft or vibrations, those journals would have fell too. I'm not sure if this matters, but my grandfather never got to meet my daughter, which is another reason why I feel strangely about that particular item falling and that the occurrences are only happening in my room and hers. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Um, I don't know. See, someone said, I think he's admiring the pictures of your daughter in the album. Probably paranormal if you don't feel any bad vibes from it. And instead feel warm and fuzzy. It's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I honestly agree with that one. Um, I mean, if you're not feeling, like, weird about it, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it all depends. Maybe if you want to play, like, devil's advocate, maybe she put the photo album, like, awkwardly on the shelf 
for like the first time ever and it f happened to fall but I mean if it's paranormal it might just be like he's looking at like you said he's looking at the pictures because he never got to meet his great-granddaughter so he's looking at it and but then I don't know where the necklace comes in the handy because I don't think the not wearing the necklace would cause that maybe I don't know like he's always gonna be there I don't know, I think I like to tell myself that my grandfather is there, like, he's, like, watching over. It's, it was super sad when he died because he died and growing up, his always big thing was, like, he wanted to see me graduate college and him and I were super close and he was one of the bathroom monitors at the high school. Um, and so, like, I always saw him and hung out with him. He lived right down the street from my parents' house and he died when I was going into my senior year so like high school graduation was hard and then now that I'm graduating college in December like I wish he could be here to see it but what comforts me and I, is I like to think that he does see it and he, he is around in some way shape or form I don't know that's what I think it honestly comforts me um some people may think like oh that's a horse load of shit or some people think that they like reincarnate I don't whatever it may be I don't know but I definitely just think in some way shape or form our loved ones are always around you know and I think that can give people some sort of comfort you know like my grandmother's aunt died today and they were super close and I was talking to my grandmother and she was just upset because obviously like they're super close and they live in Puerto Rico and that was like the only person she hung out with like they were best friends and um, I said to her, it's not a goodbye, it's a see you later, you know, like, I think eventually you'll see them, whatever it may be, because I'm not saying it's, like, we don't know what's af in whatever afterlife it is, we don't even know if there's an afterlife, there could be nothing, it could be, you die, and that's it, you're, like, that's it, but I like to tell myself that people are still around, that your soul is still somewhere, wherever that may be, whatever you believe in, I don't know. That's how I like to think about it. You guys let me know what you think. Um, this is another episode of the Paranormal Pow Wow. My brother and I came up with that name. I thought it was super cute. Might be a little um, odd. If you guys think of any other name, completely open to suggestions. I just felt like we needed to call it something other than just Paranormal Episode. Yeah. No, we need to give it a name, you know? Um, so yeah, so that's it. Don't forget to follow and subscribe the Instagram on the Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Remember those, the at is the CMP podcast, all lowercase, all one word. Um, the email is the CMP podcast at gmail.com. You can email me there as well. If you have any suggestions, any things that you'd like me not to do or anything, I'm super open to suggestions, whatever you guys want. Um, and if you like these, let me know if you guys like these episodes too. If you'd like me to do it a different way, like the paranormal episodes, like I said, it's still completely open to it. We're building a community here. So whatever you guys want, I will do it, you know? So yeah, so like, subscribe, comment, rate me on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everything. I appreciate your support so much and I look forward to talking to you guys again. Have a good day, guys. Bye.